Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And uh, I've got a good one for you today. I am in Long Beach and uh, had a meeting over here. I wanted to get out to the canals and just walk through. a very peaceful area. So much happening right now. And uh, warning after warning after warning as we hit Fed Day today. And the Fed's going to raise interest rates today. And uh, please hit the like button. Please hit the, uh, the subscribe button. But let's get into it right away. Now, do you guys listen to these warnings? Because I do. I look at these things and I say, wow, this is a new one. You know, this one. First one, Warren Buffett. There is a Buffett indicator. And the Buffett indicator is tied to gross domestic product and market capitalization. And I won't break it down for you and bore you with it. The story is below on this. But what's fascinating about this is that even with the drop in the stock market in the last few weeks, we are still at a higher level with stocks compared to the GDP than we were during the dot-com bubble era. Now, that should be a concern for everybody. We got a warning about food production. This is out of the Wall Street Journal talking about how food crops are off uh, horrifically. There's a huge amount uh, that's off, even with the war and with everything that's going on right now, the numbers are not going to get any better soon and it's going to affect food production globally, especially here in the United States. And that we're going to see food production off and there's going to be food shortages coming in 2023 through the beginning of 2024, no matter what. Now they would have to have a huge, um, uh, you know, they'd have to have production above and beyond a regular year to, uh, to catch up and just to make it normal. And an extreme harvest like that would require lots of rain, which no one's getting right now. And uh, we're seeing a complete drop in the production of, you know, wheat and vegetables and everything else, but it's affecting uh, everything that is grown, including livestock too. So this is, this is serious. And, and again, you need to look at this as far as the, uh, your food production, your food storage, and uh, making sure that you have enough. And the other thing that somebody wrote me about was rotating your food. Make sure you have, you're lose, using the oldest food first. Make sure you transfer your water bottles and things like that so that those are getting worked through and uh, they won't go bad because you don't want to just keep buying things and storing them. So the next thing is Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley's is again talking about a huge problem with uh, with the stock market and that they see a minimum of a 30% drop in the S&P 500 from where it's at. Now, again, whether you look at this or not, here you've got these streets, you know, and you take this serious or not, but there's a guy named Dr. Doom, Noriel Rabini. And the thing about Dr. Doom that I've always liked is that he's been right every time. And he calls certain things like, hey, we need to work on this and called you know the dot-com bubble called the housing bubble it's very windy here so i'm sorry about that if i'm getting any wind gusts on you guys but uh so mr rabini is talking about a minimum if everything goes smoothly the stock market's going to drop 30 percent okay well this is a guy that i'm like hmm i'm going to listen to this guy now with that being said 30 percent reduction he says easily it could go to to a 40% reduction from where it's at right now. And nobody wants to look at that. Now, you know, people just don't want to sit there and, and do the homework right now. There is a subscriber that wrote me, and I'm just going to say her first name, Patty. I'm not going to say where she's from. But it's like, hey, we're thinking of buying a house now. Is it a bad time? It's a horrible time. And I'm trying to sit there and think, you know, she's, I'm in California and she's not. Let's just put it that way. And I'm looking at her area and I'm thinking, oh, it's just overpriced and it's just not the time to do this. And again, with my online, you know, ability to check things, I found a great article for her and for everybody that, you know, I rushed to buy a house and I live to regret it. <laughs> the article says it all. The article talks about how they moved in too quickly to buy a house right now and uh, they, they bought this house and it was overpriced and it was not what they wanted. And again, I am such a person that this is not 
an investment. This is where you're going to put your head in a pillow at the end of a day. And, and it's going to be your home. Now, people have to move at times. We've all made quick decisions and had to do things. You know, oh, I got to do something quickly. Okay, we've all had to do that. Now, I am one of these people that believes, go live in the neighborhood first. If you want to buy in the neighborhood, try to rent in the neighborhood first. And try to experience what's going on there. Because I'm telling you, you can learn so much from going to a neighborhood and being part of it for just a, a short period of time. You are going to see what it's like when it rains. You're going to see what it's like at night, the weekends, parties. You know, do, 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 does the guy work on his car out in front of his house? Does the guy have a boat and block everybody's entrance? All that stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, living near a golf course, uh, one of my brothers plays golf all the time. He's like, oh my gosh, I would just have a chair here and watch everybody play golf all day, which sounds good. But I love walking by those houses that are on the golf courses and seeing the divots in the wall where people shank balls. They're nowhere near a tee and they are in the middle of the, of the fairway and they shank balls at the house, broken windows, all that stuff. That's well, something you have to live with if you're going to live on a golf course. Okay, well, again, look at this. Look at everything when it comes to buying a house because it is unlike any other investment that you have because the maintenance costs on that investment. You can buy a block of gold and set it in a drawer, and there's no maintenance cost for that block of gold. Now, I'm going to have people freak out and say it's a horrible investment, whatever, but you have to maintain a home and you have to maintain the mortgage, you have to pay for it. And my favorite was my friend when uh, she backed out of her driveway last week, uh, ripped sprinklers out. And I said, what's that gonna cost? Hundreds, <laughs> good luck, fix it, you know? I mean, th that's what you have to look forward to. And there's no landlord to call, it is you fixing it. So do you go without turning your sprinklers on because you're gonna have the geyser up in the street and then with the water shenanigans with everybody, uh, oh, you have to limit your watering. Do you want them to come by and see that you're a water waster and write you a ticket for that? Okay, stability and you know home ownership. People brag about that stuff, but sometimes it's not worth it. You know, when you look at experts like Grant Cardone talking about renting where you live and having in real estate investments outside of it, Scott Walter, same way. You know, Scott's got a bunch of investment properties. Scott does not need to work. Okay, but Scott rents in a really nice neighborhood and he talks about that. And the reason for that is just, just the quality of life. So, you know, look at these warnings that are out there. Look at the fact that interest rates right now with Mortgage News Daily are at 6.47%, almost 6.5% right now. Woo, baby. Okay, does that concern you? Concerns me freaks me out right now so share your thoughts on this stuff guys because it is just not it's not getting better right now okay all these warnings point to one thing and they just point to the instability of the markets the instability of business down here in Long Beach I was floored at the number of businesses that were out of business I was floored by the press juice business that I walked by and just had a paper sign on the door. Yeah, we won't open until noon today, which uh, the guy I met goes, I normally come by here and get a fresh juice in the morning, but no, I'm going to open at noon today. So think of the loss of sales that they had where they couldn't get the people to work there and, you know, it is what it is. So. I don't understand why people aren't working right now. I don't understand the number of people that lost their job. The, the COVID experience we've been told is over. And, but the, the idea of uh, stimulus is done. It is absolutely done. It's time to pay up, guys. So, you know, all these houses on the water. So it's breezy here. Sorry for any wind that you guys may hear. I'll get to a, a better spot in a couple minutes. The thing that has served me best 
in life with everything is being realistic. When I try to convince myself, oh, this is going to work out and it's going to, it's all going to be fine. Uh, when I am, you know, it's just a pipe dream. It never happens. You have to look at all these warnings that are just out there. The Atlanta Fed just lowered the guidance for gross domestic product for the third quarter to three tenths of 1%. And they have something that's cool that I've never seen before called GDP now. And it's an indicator of where they think things are at at any given day. It's kind of fluid, it's kind of cool. Take a look at this. But again, you know, you can sit there and wait for the Fed to tell us what it is and okay, that's great. Or you can sit there and be, you know, get these numbers earlier. Isn't this cool? Look at this, all these plants like this. That was a really cool shot. Anyways, just stunning. So you have to look at the warnings. The warnings are all right in front of us. The next one is housing. You know, we're in a severe housing recession right now and people are laughing. Ha ha ha. Well, look at it this way. Uh, building permits, that's for home improvements, starts, everything are off 10% right now. Now, the only thing that's up right now are multifamily units. So you've got large condos, those five story dormitories type buildings. Those are all up right now. Those are doing great. And again, What's going to happen with the thousands, tens of thousands of these units that don't get completed? And they're in various stages of construction around the country, and they're just not going to get done. You're just not going to see these things get finished uh, anytime soon. People need to look at that because I, I, I'm just, man, I don't get it. And, you know, not everybody gets to live in the water. I don't get to live in the water. But... You want to be able to have a backyard. You know, I, I'm amazed when you see these four and five story apartments and they've got two big dogs. And uh, I just, how do they do it? You know, yeah, you got to walk the dog twice a day. Dog needs a yard. Dog needs to go bark at somebody. Dog needs to run in the backyard. That's just me. Okay. All these warnings that are out there, you know, you have to take them seriously. All the problems with the supply chain that is not getting better. And the lie that it's the boats, I can, I could, you know, walk out to the, the other side of, uh, of the water over here and look, and there's no ships out there, guys. There is no delay for this. Now, there may be a, a uh, um, strike when it comes to the dock workers and things like that, that may still happen. And if that happens, it's gonna be catastrophic, but it's not an issue right now, guys. There are no, you know, there's not a hundred ships backed up with cargo right now. And speaking of that, Freightways Magazine talked about how cargo ships, how the price of uh, cargo containers has dropped dramatically in uh, the last six months. And that there was such a huge spike and no one ever expected the price to drop as dramatically as it has. Great article below, but again, it goes to uh, the containers, getting things shipped around the world. We don't make anything here. We don't make enough product to get manufactured and shipped around the world. We buy everything from everybody else. We are a service economy. And, you know, going back to Warren Buffett's rule, when you read this thing, he was talking about a consumption economy that we have, and you have to consume things, and it takes a job to be able to be a consumer because, let's face it, the more money you make, the more you can spend. And most people, you know, they buy things at restaurants, they buy, uh, you know, exercise equipment, furniture, everything when they have extra money. And right now with the consumption economy, you don't do that. But again, it's going to affect everything around us from the stock market to business closures to absolutely everything. So share your thoughts and all this stuff. It's always peaceful to walk through here. And again, this is Naples. It's part of Long Beach just beautiful down here this at Christmas time is unbelievable it's just really 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 just completely unforgettable when you're down here but uh, a beautiful day but all this stuff that's going on right now nobody wants to sit there and 
and look at it, but just add it up. Add two and two together and get yourself ready. If you're not taking this stuff seriously, this is on you because right now you're going to see people that are not going to be able to afford their cars. The repossessions are going up right now because people bought these used cars and they didn't have good credit, so they experienced higher interest rates. And with that, they had a hiccup in work, getting hours cut. That nobody, nobody plans, hey, let's, we're going to have an economic problem in about four months and we'll just buy a car. Nobody does that. But uh, crazy, 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 crazy. And again, I was at the DMV just yesterday talking to them and uh, they were telling me about all the people that lease these Lamborghinis and these McLarens and these hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, these very expensive cars and are shocked when their, their tags are $6,000 a year to register their car in California. That's nuts, guys. So, just a beautiful spot. Share your thoughts on everything, guys. Here's a couple of international warnings for you. And uh, the first one is from the UN, when the head of the UN said, wow, we are facing all these problems internationally and a loss of equity. Financially, everything's messed up. Uh, there's inequality in the world. Businesses are suffering and there's going to be food shortages. And again, complain, complain, complain with no resolution. Now, somebody that does have a resolution is the environmental head of Switzerland. Uh, uh, Sanita Samaraga, okay? She suggested a couple things couple three actually and that is turn off your computer when you don't need it turn off your lights and shower together so I think that could be the new mantra for I allegedly shower together okay so again this gets kind of preposterous when you've got New England let's, let's bring it back home talking about how they're going to have such an energy shortage when it comes to natural gas and the price of natural gas in weeks not next year not two years from now, three weeks from now, that it's going to devastate economies, it's going to devastate businesses, it's going to devastate families. Uh, you know, somebody sent me a story yesterday about a pizza place that their um, energy bill went up 10 times. How do you bake that into pizza and bread? I'm sorry, it was a bakery. Bakery that had uh, their uh, energy costs go up 10 times. 10 times. Hey, listen, we have an energy... Uh, spillover and you guys are gonna have to pay you know $19 for that loaf of bread what do you do what do you seriously what do you do if you're a business owner because I'm telling you guys we're going to see things that we have never seen this winter and you're going to see people freeze you're going to see old people that are absolutely going to suffer as a result of this and poor people too for that matter you know that's you know the complaint there, things aren't good in the world. You're right. What are you going to do about it? Okay. My thing is prepare. And you guys can sit there, eh, Dr. Doom. No, that's Mr. Rabini's job is to be Dr. Doom. I am just trying to get people to get themselves ready right now so that they know what's coming. And if you do that, you're going to be in great shape. You really will. It is anticipated that there's going to be more millionaires made during this time than over the course of the last two years. The next two years will create more millionaires than the last two years. Why is that? They're simple, okay? During the Depression, you had more people that became innovative with how they made money. And you're going to see that exact same process happen right now before your eyes. It's going to happen. And again, what are you good at? What do you know? What's your favorite hobby? What will people pay you for to, uh, uh, to get interest in? Seriously, whether it's a book videos you know a website a blog people make a tremendous amount of money from all that stuff and it's the joy of doing that you know try it look at it share your thoughts on all this stuff guys because these warnings are just ridiculous you know i love when you get these experts that step forward and say hey you guys gotta you know get ready for what's about to happen you need to take responsibility First one, let's talk about Elon Musk. Elon Musk is concerned about the Fed's decision to raise interest rates and how this could 
dramatically destroy the economy. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You're going to see interest rates go up and it's going to cost more to buy anything in this world in short order. It's that simple. And you know what he's worried about is that they're going to jump and do like a 1% uh, rate increase, which would be awesome. It would be awesome if they raised it 3% because it would be realistic with where we're at in the world. Now, bankers are in front of uh, having a meeting right now, six of them in front of Congress, and they want to talk about different things. And, you know, the six largest banks. Let me just talk to you about two of them. The story is below, but Jamie Dimon, of course, he's got his infamous, li infamous line that we're going to face storm clouds in the economy. Okay, thanks, Dad. That's good. Uh, and then Charles Scharf, who is the uh, uh, CEO of uh, Wells Fargo, he's talking about we need to have patience right now. Uh, for the bacon industry and we need to work on relief and we need to work on working together and how we can get through this time no there's no relief you don't understand these guys these fat cats both of these guys make over 30 million dollars a year on their salary not counting stock options what they get paid is a paycheck oh wow look look at the taxes they take out of four million dollars think about that guys 30 million bucks a year a year I think Jamie Dimon's at 36 right now because he was upset that somebody made half a million dollars more than him, so they had to bump up his pay. So crazy right now. But again, that's what you're seeing right now is that they're going to talk about relief, which is their relief because they've ran the world into the ground. They are overcharging us like you wouldn't believe for services and locking up your money. I am getting story after story after story of people that cannot get $4,000 out of the bank people that are being told to come back in 24 and 48 hours to get five grand out. Uh, customers of different banks, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, smaller banks from around the country that are telling them, one guy wrote me and wanted $5,000 to purchase a vehicle. And again, none of your business is like he said. Uh, and uh, they would only give him $5,000. And then they said, no, we can't give you that much. We don't have that much in the branch. We'll give you 4,000. Fine. So he's like, fine, I'm going to go to another branch, drives another town away to get $5,000 more money. And they're like, wait a second. No, we're not going to give it to you. It made him wait to get the money. So you're going to see this more and more and more because the banks don't have the money. They don't want you to have the money right now. So all this banking stuff, which we'll do later on in the week, but this is only going to get worse. And the bank, remember this word relief, the bank needs relief. What do they need relief? Don't you need relief? these high energy prices, everything that we're getting ripped off from, from the grocery store. Speaking of that, I was in an Albertsons yesterday and uh, I like going to the deli counter at this one place. This one woman's been there for years and uh, they normally have like the diesel meat and the cheeses and all the good stuff. And they always have sale prices. The cheapest uh, roast beef, okay, was $16.99 a pound. That was the sale, that was the bragging price was $16.99. I'm like, what happened to the $6.99 a pound meat? That's gone. No, she said, that's gone, sugar. So that's gone, okay? And the cheap cheese, you know, you buy a quarter pound here, you buy a quarter pound there. I like the sliced cheese because it doesn't go bad. Anyways, uh, outrageous, $12.99 a pound for that stuff now. So crazy, guys. It's just crazy. But don't forget the banks need relief right now. They need relief. So share your thoughts on this stuff, guys. I'm going to finish this video with these last few stories and uh, we talk a lot about preparation on this channel. Think about this. Uh, Puerto Rico, still 80% of the island does not have internet right now because of the hurricane that just hit them. So think about this guys. If something happened here, what would you do if you couldn't that and didn't have internet access and you couldn't watch me It'd be awful. <sighs> Number two, uh, there is a list of states, broken down on who's getting what as far as student loan forgiveness. You can take a look at that. California is going to issue its refund checks for gas, for inflation, starting the first week of October. And uh, so they're going to uh, uh, give those checks out. Uh, $9.5 billion is going to be given to 23 million people. They're going to get $350 a piece based on their income, up to half a million dollars. So basically, a lot of people are getting this money. And uh, if you have multiple kids, you're out of luck because you only get 
credit for one child based on the tax returns that have already been filed, you can get $1,050. So kind of interesting. The flipping service called Open Door. Open Door just announced that they are losing money hand over fist with their real estate service. And by the way, I'm at the center courtyard that's off of Ravina and The Toledo. It's not Toledo Street, it's The Toledo. People in this neighborhood love to correct me on that. But uh, The Toledo, and normally the fountain's on, but it's not on because of the wind. So Open Door is losing so much money as real estate prices go down, they're losing money flipping houses. In the third quarter, think about this, they're going to lose $175 million on real estate. Ouchie mama, $175 million. So final thing is, uh, this was sent to me from people in New Jersey, uh, stores are not replenishing their shopping carts uh, because people are stealing them. Now you can sit there and say the homeless have always stole shopping carts. No, people are stealing the shopping carts and taking them back to the stores so they have a shopping cart. Is that insane? So we're, this is going to be our personal shopping cart. We're going to take it home and take it back to our store in Jersey. So we are living through crazy times right now, guys. Do not forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, we had an email go out in the email blast. Check your spam filter. And if you want more exclusive content, there's Patreon. Onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon.